Okay, we are moving on to turn two of round one. Now, we do not change initiative. Initiative stays the same for the entire round. We will only do initiative again at the beginning of round two. So, we move on to the Federation, who can now move or interact. They... Let's see if I have enough. Denatra was six. There are no command... Oh, there are some question marks, though. Let's see. No command. Oh, here we go. All right. We are going to try to... We're going to forego movement. We are not... The, the Enterprise is not going to move this, this turn. Instead, we are just going to try to recruit Denatra. We're going to play Improvise and power it with a purple data data token. The dice when used are called data tokens. And we're going to have to discard two cards. We will get rid of Intimidate and we'll get rid of Intimidate and Explore to generate five diplomacy then we'll play diplomacy to get diplomacy two now that's going to bring us to seven diplomacy but we only need six to recruit Denatra the remaining is lost she costs six to recruit she has an outpost symbol she is now a member of the Enterprise's crew in future turns, we'll be able to play her for Attacker Shields 3 or Long Range Attack 2. So she's apparently our tactical officer. And that is going to end the, fe the, the uh, Federation's turn. We're going to discard these cards to our discard pile, re-roll this die, and add it back to the command. Alright, now... We're going to do our first exploration. Maybe. No, we're actually not. We're going to prepare for our first exploration maybe next turn. Or we're going to look at emergency repairs. Let's take a look and see what emergency repairs it does. Because remember, we can take a regular turn, or we can do emergency repairs. And I'm honestly not entirely sure what emergency repairs does. You can decide to perform emergency repairs instead of taking a regular turn. While performing emergency repairs, you can't move and you can't perform any actions, such as interactions or combat. You are allowed to play special repairs to heal. Uh, you are allowed to play special repair and heal cards and effects and may also use a location that provides a benefit uh, at the end of your turn, such as a dry dock. Oh, you know what? There's a dry dock right here. In a dry dock, if you end your turn on a dry dock, you can permanently remove one damage card from your hand or your discard pile. Alright, you know what? We're not going to take an emergency turn. We are going to try to get to that dry dock. So I'm going to play Engage to generate movement 2 to move into the dry dock. And then... I'm going to play Repair Hull for my action and use this purple die to try to re-roll it to get a gold energy. I do not. So it goes back there as an unknown. Right? That's Or is that the one that we can use as any? No, white is the one you can use as any. Purple can be used for rare cards and be real. Alright, so we did it right. So I can repair or draw one card. So I'm going to repair one card out of my hand and put it back into that pile. And then at the end of my turn, we discard the cards we've played into the appropriate discard pile. I'm going... I can't get rid of the damage. I'm going to keep Honor. So I draw three new cards. 
and I get Insight. You may use one additional data die from the core this turn. Very nice. Or power it with blue. Take one data die from the core and set it to any color except white. Gain two data tokens of that color. Do not re-roll this die and return it to the core. I got Lursa and Baytor. Gain one red or gold token, or gain one blue data crystal in your inventory, or heal two. Power it with blue. When you play this, play another action card with it. Gain the stronger effect of that card for free. If that effect gains you move, diplomacy, shields, or any type of attack, gain that amount plus three. Wow. And a full speed ahead. So that's not a bad hand for next turn. And now because we're ending our turn in a dry dock, we can permanently remove one damage card from your hand or discard pile. I'm going to remove a damage from the discard pile. So I'm not sure if regular repair will let you do that. Let's see. Repair, repair, repair. See, and this is one of those things where, where just a uh, glossary of terms would have been really awesome. Alright, anyway, I'm not going to worry about it because it didn't come up. But that's their turn. So now, we're only at six minutes. We'll go ahead and take the Federation's turn. What do they have in their hand? Oh, I never drew up their hand, so they need four more cards. One, two, three, four. They got synthesize data, research, full speed ahead, and engage. I was thinking about going and fighting that Romulan Warbird, but... They do not have a ton in the way of combat cards. So we are going to have them explore. This is an excellent opportunity, because ex you do explore during the movement phase. And they are in an excellent position to demonstrate the explore mechanics. When you explore, you reveal new tiles. And ex exploration kind of breaks the movement phase a little bit. All right. When you are currently on a space that borders empty table space, and if that empty table space is not behind the asteroid field, and it's not, we're in the middle, you can reveal new new uh, tiles. Every time a player reveals a new tile, they gain one experience point. That player immediately moves their faction token on the experience track. And it costs points to reveal... Uh, you have to pay two movement points to explore a new tile. Now, because... I'm touching two areas. I could put a tile, our next tile, here. I believe, let's see. Nope, actually I think I can only do it one way. I would have had to, yep, okay. So they're not in, as, in the position I thought they were in. But, I'm going to generate two movement points to display that. I'm going to play Engage to generate two movement points. So we take the top tile, flip it over, and remember we line up the number with the asterisk on the starter, and then place it like this. And if we've done it right, we should get circles and stars. So we've got a finish circle there, we've got a star there, and a star there. So we have placed it right. Now the way this initial thing is set up, they actually have it in the back of the book. Step 7, revealing tile number 3. Tile number 3 has a Romulan starbase. So we'll need to take out the Romulan starbase card. There we go. When a Romulan Starbase is revealed, place a Romulan Starbase token face down on its space. So now I need to find 
the Romulan Starbase token. I believe. Yes. Right? No. It is this token. Put that token face down on its base. If a ship moves to a space adjacent to a Romulan starbase, reveal the starbase token by flipping it face up. Unlike the Romulan Warbird, the Romulan starbase does not attack ships that pass near it. A ship cannot move onto an unconquered Romulan starbase even to pass through it. A ship can, however, assault a Romulan starbase from an adjacent space. Assaulting a Romulan starbase is seen as an act of war so you gain reputation minus one at the start of the combat. Uh, you then fight a combat using the same rules described earlier. If you defeat the Romulan Starbase, you conquer it and must immediately move on to the Romulan Starbase for free, which establishes your control over it. This free movement is mandatory, but does not provoke enemy ship tokens in the vicinity. If you ever move, like, from here to here, because you moved adjacent, and you couldn't be on a sun, but just say, from here to here, because you're adjacent to an enemy still, it would provoke an attack, and they would attack you and you'd start a combat. Alright, and then that's the only thing. There's another outpost there. But yeah, that, so that's that. So it generated two movement, created and displayed the Romulan outpost. Now, even though I played a card for the human to generate that, I can still generate movement to continue moving if I so choose. And I do. I'm going to play full speed ahead with this data icon and re-roll it to try to get a gold. I do not. So that goes back there and I generate two movement. So I'm just going to move... <sighs> yeah, I'll just move the two onto that outpost. And then on my action, I'm going to play Research. Now, I've already tried to play a die, so I can't power it. But I gain a red or gold data token. So I'm going to take a red data token. So I'm going to take a red fruity pebble, put it on the Enterprise as in their inventory. And then that is going to conclude our turn. And because we're potentially going up into combat, I'm going to discard this card and draw four new cards. I got Repair Hull, Insight. Battle stations and engage. So that's not bad. Next, we move on to the Klingons. Let's see. We're going to play. Oh, actually, these go into the. Enterprise's discard pile. We're going to pay two to have them move here. Ugh, actually, we're not. We're going to keep this the way it is so that they end their turn there. We're going to have them discard Insight. Now, do I heal first or draw first? Because I'm ending... I want to stay on that dry dock. Let's see. It says, discard all cards played, return all used and unused data to the bank, receives any rewards earned during their turn, 
Resolves a level up, draws cards from the ship deck. So I guess that's the last thing you do. You draw cards last. So the first thing I'm going to do is discard. I want to say insight. We'll discard insight. Keep the rest. We'll discard this using the dry dock. So that at the end of my turn, I can draw two cards. And I got synthesize data and explore. Now. We have no cards left to draw, so we're going to declare the end of the round. So everybody has... Oh, this this video is actually gone 15 minutes. So we're going to end this here, and we're going to do one final video doing the end of round phase.